Welcome to Face to Facts. Great to have you all here once again. I am Nick Face. We have Phil Healy and Tom Smith joining us here today, just at like like every week, every time that we do our show. How's how are you, Tom? Tom is good. He is a mime now, and Phil is a ghost. So that's <laughs> how we're all doing on that front. Um, I want to go over obviously the Red Sox and baseball things. Talk about Tom Brady getting his ring from last night, which I still don't feel really good about, but it is what it is. Welcome back, Taylor Hall. Four-year, uh, six million per. Great to see that move there. No surprise. And Milwaukee Bucks, they are your champions. They are your champions in the NBA. I want to start our program off, though, first with the Boston Bruins, because they deserve to be talked about, and the rest of hockey. Because the Seattle Kraken are the team that is going to be the new expansion team in the NHL for this uh, upcoming year. And they had their expansion draft. This, that was this week. And Jeremy Lazon, player for the Bruins, was selected to go to the Kraken. So the Bruins lose that left-handed defenseman, basically, right there. And I kind of expected it. I kind of thought it was coming. Tom and I casually talked off air about it, and I was more hopeful that Connor Clifton would be staying on the Bruins after what he did from last season. So I think Lazon is replaceable. I think Clifton, he's already kind of gone through what the expectation here with the Bruins is. He knows how to play. He knows his expectation. He knows what he's supposed to do. And I think that – I think I'm okay with what happened from that front. Yeah, um, I don't think we're really going to miss him too much. I don't. Um, like we've talked about when we were doing uh, all the postseason stuff and everything, he kind of kind of blew a few games for us. Um, I think at least two in the playoffs. Yeah. From stupidity. Especially towards the end there, too. Firing a puck across um, the line, and that definitely cost him at least one of the games. It was mental mistakes that I think that that was the biggest concern on my end on Lazon. And granted, he's young. He's 23 years old. You learn over time on all this playmaking skills that, that, that occur. But I liked Connor Clifton's play a whole lot more, and I still think Clifton brings more to the table. I think the biggest concern and issue is that left-handed defenseman, you know, on the, the – that they're going to be lacking because the depth on the defense front is pretty bad on the Bruins end. So they need to go out. I want two. I want two puck moving defensemen. Yeah. Um, definitely could use a little, definitely could use a couple of veteran presence defensemen. Uh, we still don't really have that, especially now with Kevin Miller leaving, uh, retiring ending his career, whatever you want to call it. Um, so, yeah, we, I mean, the closest thing we have to a veteran defenseman right now is Brandon Carlo. And he's still pretty young. I wouldn't even look at him as a veteran. Same with McAvoy. The kid, well, that's why I'm saying the closest thing we have to it. Puppies. You know? They're puppies. But those puppies but, are maturing and obviously becoming uh, big-time players in the NHL. Yeah. Um and I mean, the expansion draft was kind of kind of a surprise to me. Uh, yeah, talk to me about didn't, it. Didn't really. I, I couldn't tell you half the guys on. I couldn't tell you a thing about half the guys on that team now. Um, didn't even know about majority of them. I think I only knew maybe five or six. Jamie Alexei Alexie is one name that I did know. I believe that yeah. he was selected from the crack, and he was a Dallas. I think it was with Dallas. At, at yeah, Friday like Friday. Jamie Alexiak. Uh, Mark Giordano was the biggest name on that roster. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, Alexiak and then Brandon Tanev. Uh, I knew about the Flurry brothers. Yep. I, um, I do know that there will be other moves that they'll oh, make in trades and stuff like that. But what you see right now is a team that I average. Yeah. I would say I would say definitely average. Um, they definitely have a good 
you know, first or second pair with Giordano and Vince Dunn. Jamie Alexiak will bring some physicality to the table. Um, they are going to have to do something about goaltending veteran presence because they don't have that. They, they decided to take three young goalies. Um, and one being Vanacek, who wasn't even supposed to play this season. Yeah, I, I, again, uh, to echo Tom's statement here on the selections that were made, it was some of them were whoppers. Some of them were I, like, what? Why are you making that move? But I'm sure as this team continues to get assembled, we'll start getting some of those answers will be figured out as they put it, everything together on, on their end for that team. Back on the Bruins front, so now that you're down Lazon, they're going to need, a, you know, like I said, I think one, at least one, if not hopeful on my wish list, two other defensemen that can fill the voids and really make the Bruins become a, a solid force here for this upcoming season. Their schedule was released this upcoming week, and I believe they want, they start, is it October 14th or 16th? I know they, their first home game. I know their first home game is the 16th night. against Dallas. Okay, their so first... it is the 16th. It's a Friday night. Yep, it's Dallas. Okay. That's the opener. So you are, that is correct on that front, Tom. Taylor Hall, I think we all wanted him. It was just a matter of figuring out the bits and pieces on what it Money. was going to cost. I'm very happy yep. with the move. Very happy with the move. We wanted Taylor Hall. I wish he showed us a little bit more in the postseason, but I like the player. And it definitely is a fit. My concern is on the Krejci front. Rumor has it that Krejci is leaning towards retirement as of right now. That just came out this afternoon. And that's one of the reasons why the Bruins are now tied to Ryan Suter. And I don't know if I love that because, again, it's kind of the same age and same kind of thing right there. But I would much rather a Suter, Krejci, and Hall versus Suter and Crate, uh, Suter and uh, Hall. I want. I, I'd rather Suter be another piece. Where he fits, I don't know, but that's just what the rumor is out there of what's transpiring right now with all these free agency moves and the NHL saga. Well, Su Suter is a defenseman, so that would be good. So maybe it is the the question that I have about this on why Krejci's name is into this is because of the cap the amount of money that you have to spend. And that still is a little bit of working pieces to figure out. I don't know if they're going to have enough to up the ante here and get the rest of the players that we, we really want. Um, but we'll have to see. I do want at least something to come. I would much rather prefer Krejci back. I do. I think Krejci, Hall, and Smith's line, a full season would be great to see. Uh, well, not really, what, 10, 10 games regular season and then playoffs. Yeah, 10 or 12, something like that, maybe more. Craig, Craig Smith was in and out from injuries with concussions and stuff like that. The, the Bruins' biggest thing here is going to be to fight the injuries. I mean, I think the injuries were ha, have been a biggest the biggest concern over the past couple seasons. Especially on the back end. So – health is going to be vital to this team giving it one more shot i don't know if they have enough can they figure out something to do with spreading this money out across all cylinders with all positions and boards i hope they can but that's the scope with what's going on in bruins land and the rest of the nhl another uh, another thing though too is a big name on the free agent market right now is uh, Alex Alexander Ovechkin he is a free agent right now he's unrestricted so any team can go after him I don't want him really nope I don't want him I don't want him I can I can 100 percent say it I've never been a big fan of his style I think he is a toxic player who's selfish and all about himself. I don't care about, plus he's older. I, I, no, I'd pass. Yeah, but I mean, if Kre if Krejci retires and we could sign Ovechkin, put him on the left wing, put Taylor Hall on the right wing, and then you have Craig Smith the center, because Craig you Smith is a also better, a center. You have a better chance of it snowing in July. I know this weather has been kind of crazy. This I'm month. just, I'm just throwing out, I'm just throwing it out there. I'm just spitting, spitting. Yeah, yeah, out. yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, no, I'm shutting that down. I think a lot of people would kind of feel my, feel the same thing that I feel regarding Ovechkin. I just, I, I don't like his play. I never have liked his play. I'm not going to say he's not great, but I just don't like the style. I don't think it fits with the Bruins. Well, plus if he came here, he'd have to wear a different number. Yeah, I would. Yeah, you're right. You're right, because it's retired. Um, and the, the draft is uh, July 23rd. And the Bruins have pick number 21, 20, right? Yeah, 21. 21. Seattle has pick number two. Buffalo has the first pick. Yep. <clears throat> uh, the other thing on Buffalo is Jack Eichel's names out there. I just don't see a fit here with the Bruins. And I don't think. Well, Buffalo if Craig deal, retires. I, I don't think Buffalo is going to deal with Boston again after how they pretty much fleeced him on the Taylor Hall and Curtis uh, Lazar move. So I just don't think Buffalo is going to deal with them. I don't. Yeah, but if Krejci retires, it wouldn't be a bad thing. It fills a void. That's not a bad idea. I actually that one I would be okay with because I think he would. I think he would be okay here. I think he wants to play here. It's good to have players, but you want the players that want to play here. And well, he's a you know, he's a hometown boy Eichel, too. I mean, they want to play here, so he's a hometown I, boy. I would I would entertain that definitely. Tom's got his Red Sox hat on. It looks like he's got his Red Sox shirt. I think he's heading to the game this evening against the Yankees. I just got to say, if you didn't watch the game last night, I, it was the most embarrassing thing I've ever seen in the, as a Yankee. As a, if you're a Yankee fan, if you're not already jumping into a New York subway train yet, I don't know. I just don't know. You, I feel bad for them right now. I really do. That was abysmal last night. They put in a guy, uh, his name was Krosky or something like that. Boone wouldn't throw Chapman or any of his other gems that gets the job done. I think it was uh, Britain. I think he, they picked like three days in a row and he said, ah, I can't use those guys, those poor things. They can't go out and throw 10 pitches. And the guy, the guy unleashed five wild pitches in the inning. It was embarrassing. You know, the stupid rule with the runner starting on second. So you had Devers at second base. First pitch, boing, backstop. Devers is at third. Second pitch, boing, Devers scores. Third pitch, in the dirt, the catcher made an unbelievable block, I think. And then the fourth pitch, he air mails it to the backstop. And uh, Bogart thought he was going to get second base because I think the ball went out of play. I mean, it was Little League. It was absolute Little League. So, anyways, the Red Sox last night it was a frustrating night. It was. Tanner Hulk pitched, pitched great. Had that stupid rainstorm come in, delayed the game for an hour. So the game didn't get over to almost midnight last night. Had an hour rain delay. The field was just saturated beyond belief. I think you actually saw remnants of the Charles River actually coming into Fenway. That's how hard it. That's how hard it rained there. Yeah. The, you know that that Charles River, that dirty water right on the field. Ugh. Love that dirty water. <laughs> Love that dirty water. But anyways, it was kind of funny how it rained because actually the Red Sox handled the rain a whole lot better than those frauds from New York did this, this past weekend. That series was very frustrating. So getting revenge on New York last night was great, but now I want to see them really kick them when they're down the rest of the time this series. So it's a four-game series, and the Red Sox won on a walk-off Sacrifice fly, so exciting, by Hunter Renfro. That scored uh, Bogarts, and they ended up getting the job done. But to get to that point, they were down three to one. It was very frustrating because Ottavino didn't have a very good night last night. Walking people, he's stealing bases left and right on him because he's a slow mover to the mound, a uh, home plate rather. Some unlikely names stepped up in the ninth inning last night. Number one, Verdugo, who's Kind of been a shell of himself lately. He's hurt, banged up, had three hits last night, went to the opposite field. Definitely seems like he seems like he's approaching the baseball differently. I like the swing that plays at Fenway Park with him. So he got that started with one out. And then Bobby Suckbag, uh, Bobby Dahlback, who you, you all know how my feeling. I'm done. I could play a better first base than him right now. Sorry, but I could. Hits it to amazingly right field, get runners at first and second. Uh, then it came down to two outs, and Kiki Hernandez, who's just been absolutely on fire for the past couple weeks now, got the job done, 
tied it up, and then it led to the extra innings uh, deal. So good job for the Red Sox. They lead the league in comeback wins. I'm hoping that tonight Garrett Cole is absolutely shelled out of his mind, and Rodriguez pitches a really good game. That's my hope. So we have the trade deadline coming up next week. There are some needs on this list. Tampa just got a whole lot better. They just traded for Nelson Cruz. So that's not good. So Nelson Cruz will now be a member of the Rays. It gives them a big anchor in their lineup. I think on the need for the Red Sox is to fill the first base void somehow, some way. I'd like another reliever of sorts. You get Chris Sale back pretty soon. I think your rotation will be okay. But adding another quality arm to anchor that bullpen, I think is a good thing. I also would try and upgrade the catcher position. Don't be surprised if the Red Sox put some flyers out on Christian Vasquez. I'm kind of sick and tired of his play as of late. Lazy, sloppy. His, his approach at the plate sucks. It got to be better. I expected a lot better from him. So you know how I am with calling certain people out sometimes when we do these shows. Probably going to hit a grand slam of some sort right in my face tonight. And good. I hope you do. Because you deserve to be called out. You're playing absolutely awful baseball both ways defensively offensively and somehow he's leading the league in stolen bases for the red sox i don't get it how is how is christian vasquez leading in stolen? i don't get it uh what's your outlook makes on this no team? sense what was that i said what's your outlook i'll shut up now i mean yeah uh i mean it's going to be a great matchup well on paper it would be a great matchup with uh Rodriguez and uh, Garrett Cole, but we all know how Cole's been doing against the Red Sox. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, Vas Vasquez has kind of been uh, kind of been a no show all season. Better be careful. You know, his wife sometimes attacks me on Twitter. So as of as of now, we have no uh, we have no firestorms. But you know, you know how that story goes, folks. Comes at me and out of nowhere, she'll come and get me. You go and play in his. Great, I'll, I'll suit right up. I'm not a catcher, but I'll suit right up. Your husband stinks right now. <laughs> Sorry. I just call him as I see. Yeah. Speak the facts. Speak the truth. Can't handle the truth. Um, Where's Phil? Phil. We got to talk about the box. Well, anyways. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. There he is. Sorry. Sorry, I'm actually at home today because Jason decided to come back into the studio, so it wasn't doing it Friday. So oh, he okay. kind of mucked up uh, a bit of uh, my plans. So here I'm watching a little guy. And I was able to check in on the box. Did any of you guys watch Game 6 or any of the other? Tom is shaking his head. I, I watched 6 a little bit. I was did very you? happy. I have to say, didn't really have a particular favorite. I've said Suns for the most part, mm -hmm. but you got to appreciate how Giannis won this championship without really any star power, a.k.a. LeBron having somebody or even Kyrie having somebody or any, any of that. There was really no other star-powered piece to him. And I have to tell you, it feels nice to appreciate somebody like that. Oh, yep, sorry. I got a little choky. Yeah, um, yeah, and he called them out. He called everyone out who went to go uh, start a super team. I don't know if you listened to his post a game conference at all. A little bit, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's great. He calls out everyone. He's like, it could. You don't, it, need, he, you don't need a super team. Well, no, he said it, it would be easy. It'd be easy to do that, but he did it the hard way, and it feels yeah, good. Yeah, So yeah, he was thumping his chest, and for good reason. He deserves to. Yeah. No, they did. Listen, all, they got some breaks, sure. But you know what? They also play – that's what you do. You play in the playoffs. You know what You know what breaks are, too? When you're, <laughs> you're – When the you're season's fat. over. <laughs> that's well, when your break is. No, no, no. But I know breaks meaning, like, stuff goes their way. Oh, that, uh, yeah. yeah. So yeah. they got some breaks. But you know what? Also, breaks uh, come to those people who don't uh, sign lazy bastards <laughs> who don't want to play – uh, for the team they're playing for, and then they just want to win a championship, walk on a team, and All win a championship. And I went to uh, Bow Street, North Cam Studios, yeah. 
Yeah. Well, no, I listen, I love James Harden too. I think he has a great game. I don't like him as a person per se. I don't know him as a person, but I don't like his, I never really, his attitude sometimes is pretty bad. And so maybe it's good. I don't know, but he just, he clearly was out of shape and he, his hammy got all messed up. And, you know, Kyrie just kind of went down. The, uh, he landed. Weirdly. There's nothing better than seeing Brooklyn collapse the way they did. It was wonderful. Yeah. Sorry. Got my back. <laughs> but, no, it was a, it was a decent game. Uh, Phoenix was a, a, a good team. And Milwaukee just – they, they – ah, and Giannis just played like a god, Greek god. And that last – 50 points. 50 points, 13 rebounds, and I think six assists. Yeah. Or, no, five blocks. And he was 17 of 19 from the free throw line. And that's what should scare everyone in the league. He's been, he's able to – if he consistently does that throughout the rest of his career, look out because he's, he's the new man in town. But, yeah, I'm looking forward to – what uh, the NBA does in the next year, and if this transforms um, any of the teams into like you I know, it does. It's a statement. It's a statement championship. So good job to the Bucks. Yes, we're Celtic people and all, but you know, I I didn't have any any person in the race to win. So Suns or Bucks, it didn't really matter to me. Just happy that it was done without that whole super team kind of feel to it so good job for them yeah and can uh, i say can i just say ahead. about uh sorry about the bruins uh, i know you guys were just saying everything i wrote you in that email about and that's great and i just want some credit just for everything oh well, <laughs> bit by bit. all the time i mean well. you are you are our bruins insider so of any course. Inside information you know you you take a lot of credit for that too i yeah. appreciate it and yeah. thank you yeah. I'm, yeah i know taylor hall signing had all to do with you so we have thank, to thank you Bill thank Haley. you Thank you. Thank you. We have Phil to thank for uh, oh, God. Phil all coming. Yeah, <laughs> yeah even, even my son is looking at me incredulously. Yeah, right. He's like, what are you doing? He's got, he's all got, right. the, uh, he's got the 411 on it all. <laughs> yeah, like my finger on the pulse. 411 on the phone, too. Hey, Taylor Hall, come back to Boston. Uh, the last thing I want to say is I'm kind of sick of Tom Brady right now, as much as I got to tell you. I, he's just showing off that ring. This is the best ring I've ever had. Bah, 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 bah. Shut up. Just shut up. I'm so tired of just listening to it and everything. Great job. You won the thing, but I'm losing some respect here, guys. I'm losing Better watch it. out. Giselle might come after you. I'm losing it. I'm losing it. He just wants to forget everything he did here in New England, those 20 years right down the drain. Don't blame it on Brady, but I blame it a lot on the ownership, a lot. Kraft, Belichick, they screwed him. But you know what? I don't like how he's throwing it back in the face. That's the thing. So. That's my stance on it. Yeah, another ring. Great. Congrats. Have a party. Um, on the Patriots front, it looks like the Patriots are trying to come to terms with Stefan Gilmore on some sort of a contract extension of some sorts. He is at camp. He's on the pup list. He's physically unable to perform from because it's some sort of uh, is it a, it's a hamstring that he had an, is, an issue with towards the end of the season. I think that they should be okay on that front. Again, the whole drama with the Cam Newton versus Mac Jones. I'm a Mac Jones guy. I know the rest of us here are too. But that's the general gist of what's happening with, uh, with football. Other than Aaron Rodgers does not want to play for the, for the backers anymore. We'll have to figure out what happens with that. Maybe, we'll, maybe there's more to the story we'll see in the next few weeks. So I know Tom's going to fly. I know Phil's got uh, his, his child and everything to deal with. I got a store to run. So. I'm going to sign off. I'm going to hope you all have a great rest of your weekend. We will be here next time. And I believe we'll be here the next time talking about what's going to happen in the trade deadline for the Red Sox. So we'll talk about that more on the next episode of Face the Facts. For Nick Face, for Tom Smith, and the ghost of Phil Healy, a.k.a. our Bruins guy, we will see you next time on another episode. Bye.